डाउनलोडिंग इक्लिप्स पाहो यूजिंग योर वेब ब्राउजर सर्च फॉर इक्लिप्स पाहो एंड गो टू दिस वेब पेज दैट इज प्रोजेक्ट डॉट इक्लिप्स डॉट ऑर्ग स्लैश प्रोजेक्ट आई ओ टी एंड द टाइटल इज इक्लिप्स पाहो so here we can see that eclipse paho project provide reliable open source implementation of the open standard messaging protocol aimed at new existing and emerging applications for m to m that is machine to machine and internet of things that is iot just go to the downloads tab and then click download eclipse paho it will take you to this page so here you can see that mqtt and mqtt sn are lightweight publish subscribe messaging transport for tcp ip and connection less protocols such as udp the eclipse paho project provides an open source mainly client side implementation of the mqtt and the mqtt sn protocol in a variety of programming languages and we can download it from here this download section and here we can see that paho is available in a variety of programming languages like java python javascript golang c c++ rust dotnet android service and embedded c c++ as we need a mqtt client for our firmware application that is why we must go for this embedded c c++ option and these version c and c++ they are not for embedded system but for bigger operating system like windows and linux so if you are creating a pc application then we need to download these versions but for building firmware we should download this version so now let us click on it as i have said that the full paho mqtt c library was written for linux and windows in mind and this is a special version especially for embedded systems scroll to the bottom and here you can get the link to the github repository and then you can download a zip package and then extract that zip file somewhere in your hard drive and you will have a folder structure similar to this so this is the content of the zip file after extraction it might seem very complicated with lots of file but it is not so actually this is a very simple library and we will understand this library thoroughly in the coming videos so thanks for watching see you in the next lesson architecture of the paho library so this is the entire content of the paho package as you can see that there are lots of file here but the whole library is contained in only these three folders that is mqtt client mqtt client dash c and mqtt packet so to make the thing simple i will remove a bit of clutter from here actually these are not clutter but i am removing those thing so that we can focus on the important things that is why i am removing some of the less important things so that we can focus on the important things easily so i am deleting this github then settings debug the doc i will leave these folders that is mqtt client and then i am also deleting test and all these files so we are left with these only and now i will explain you about all these things 
so actually this paho library is built on two layer and the bottom most layer is this mqtt packet and this parts only create the serialization and deserialization of the mqtt packets those are sent over the tcp socket or received from the tcp socket and the mqtt client this is the actual high level library and it sits on top of this that is MQTT packet and this MQTT client use services provided by the MQTT packet and generally our application code interacts with this part of the library that is MQTT client and it does not directly interface with this MQTT packet but if you are writing a low level firmware then you are free to use directly the serialization and the deserialization function provided by this part that is MQTT packet but generally our application code will interact with this part that is MQTT client and as you can see that that there are two version of the client one is this MQTT client and another is MQTT client dash C so this first one is for C++ and this second one that is dash C is for C language and since we are not using C++ in our firmware project that is why we can also delete this part So now we are left with only two folder. Now this view is far more simplified than the actual view and this will help you clearly understand this library. The library is a pure C code which is platform independent and it can be easily ported to any embedded device platform and it does not contain any network connection code. It contains only MQTT specific code. So it's up to the user to provide it with the networking code that is available in their platform. For example, in this course, our platform is based on Ethernet connectivity using W5500 chip. So we must provide some code to the PAHO that will help it access the network using W5500. And we will call this code the MQTT interface code. So here we have our PAHO library and on top of it, we have our application code. And just below Paho, we have the MQTT interface code. And this MQTT interface code is implemented using the Wiznet driver. That means the Wiznet driver is providing networking services to the interface code. And below the Wiznet driver are the SPI driver, which are the STM32 HAL drivers, which is controlling the W5500 chip. So this is the complete stack of our system. And now let us understand the architecture of this MQTT interface code. Apart from the networking services, the FAO library require few more services from the underlying operating system or the platform. And now let us see what are these. The first one is the timer service. The MQTT system need to keep track of the time. That is why it needs a service of a timer. It is used to generate delays and timeout. It is also useful for events that occur at certain time interval, like sending the keep alive packets. Since timers are the part of hardware and it is dependent on the platform being used, like STM32, that is why it is the responsibility of the user to provide the timer service. For a basic MQTT client implementation, only these two services are required. But if we are creating a but for enhanced MQTT client experience, we need a few more services and these are a services for multitasking interface. We get a much enhanced MQTT client when it is allowed to run in a separate dedicated task. So our application code and the MQTT client code both runs in their separate threads of execution and are separate from each other. But for this type of setup, we need some kind of real-time operating systems like free RTOS. Only when our system or the platform has a real-time operating system, we can have multiple threads of execution. Otherwise, we have to put everything in a single while loop, main loop. And since in embedded world, we have a variety of options to choose when it comes to real-time operating system. That is why the PAHO code is not tied to any real-time operating system. But it is the responsibility of the user to provide these code, which connect the PAHO library to the real-time operating system of the choice of the user. For example, free RTOS. This code is highly specific to the operating system being used. That is why this code is not provided with the PAHO library.
and what are the services that this layer should provide it should provide a function to create a thread and it should also provide api to handle the mutex so we have to write a small amount of glue code that attaches our paho library to free rtos or any other operating system of our choice in the coming In the coming lessons we will have a detailed look about each of this service and their implementation so that's it for now see you in the next lesson